Hi, welcome to the first video by Callie. Uh, my name is Jake, I am the creator of The Cedar. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be posting various videos showing you small aspects of how the product is actually being made. Um, what I wanna to do today is I wanna show you how I'm gonna be creating the screen bezel that I have here with me. Um, this will house the 17.3 inch widescreen LCD for the main product. It's made from polyurethane resin, um, and the whole process includes silicon moulds, uh, resin itself, and a lot of different things. So what I'm going to be using in this video, to make the silicon mould, I'm going to be using CS2 condensation cure silicon rubber uh, from Easy Composites. Uh, it's really, really good stuff. I'm also going to be using PX90 hard flexible um, polyurethane resin, also from Easy Composites. And this comes with the black pigment, which gives the resin the color that it does. The first step I'm going to be showing you is a very short um, time-lapse video of how I create the mold box for the silicon rubber. I'll then move on to show you exactly how you need to mix the silicon uh, and to pour it into the actual mold itself. So once the silicon has cured, the next part and the last part of the process is to mix the polyurethane resin. Um, and pour it into your silicon mold. So what I've got here is the completed mold box. Um, I've done it in this way. I've done it so sort I've of missed the midline. It's basically stopped so you don't waste a lot of silicon that you don't need to waste. Um, I've made it so it's a little bit, it's a bit bigger. It's just under three quarters of an inch bigger than the master that I have here. Um, I don't know if you can actually see that, but what I've done is I've actually put a strip of double-sided tape pretty much all the way around the outside just to keep it nice and firm and steady inside the box for when the silicon is being poured on. Glue, uh, hot glue is, is okay to use, uh, but I find that it does raise the master too much uh, from the base of the mold box. So you do get a little bit of the silicon seeping underneath. Just place it into the mold box. You've got, a sort of, you've got an even space around the hole of the master. Um, and you need to press pretty firm just to keep it nice and secure so then it doesn't fall out and doesn't move when you pull the silicone in. The silicon that I'm actually using is CS2 Condensation Cure Silicon Rubber from Easy Composite which comes with the small bottle catalyst that you actually need um, to add to the actual silicon rubber itself. It is a 100 to 5 part by weight um, and I've done all the calculations just to save you watching we do that. The silicon that I needed was just over 1400, um, 1400 millilitres of silicone <coughs> which works out to around 67 mil of the catalyst. I've added that already so you don't actually have to see me do all that but obviously the silicon is there and that's the catalyst to add to it. What you need to do is you need to get something that's sturdy to mix this in. When you pour this in, you need to mix very, very well. Um, try not to let air bubbles in to the mixture as much as possible. So if we just add this into here. Um, and just mix it in. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to keep the bottom of the stick at the bottom of the jug because that way if you're sort of bringing it up and down there's more chance for it to get more chance for it to let the air bubbles in which is not really what you want you need to mix this for a good few minutes just to make sure that it is completely and 100% mixed in because any variation within the mixture so if you've got 
if you haven't quite mixed properly, I mean, it's, it, it isn't too bad with this because the catalyst is actually black and the silicon rubber is white, which makes it quite easy to spot if you have got a dark patch in there. It's fairly easy to spot and you can just sort of mix that out. That's pretty mixed. Let's try and do the bombs away method, uh, which basically is just trying to pour the silicon in from quite a height, decent enough height, um, because it'll, it basically makes the, the stream of the silicon thinner and it pushes any little air bubbles or any large air bubbles that is um, out of the silicone. The idea is to pull the silicon in one spot and let it gradually go around, uh, cover your master gradually. However, because this is a, a kind of strange shape, what I might do is pour it into one spot and then stop and pour it into the next spot. And you can gradually bring the mixture up higher just to create that little bit more height so you can see that the stream of silicon is quite thin which means it's getting rid of all the bubbles well most of the bubbles that has poured pretty well my mold box has actually has held together which is brilliant um, can't see any leaks or anything around there what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sit this um, at room temperature for around 24 hours. That is it for how to make your seed. Hi, welcome to the second part of casting the screen bezel for the cedar by Cali. I've got the complete uh, silicon mold here. Um, we cast this a couple of days ago and uh, it's actually come out really, really well. There's no, no blemishes, no air bubbles or anything that I can see inside the cast, which is actually really, really good. Um, really really pleased with it um, so it should should give us a, a very decent cast um, to demold this all I did was simply take the foam board from around the outsides uh, and from underneath carefully removed it and uh, carefully took took out the master that we have here um, as you can see it's it's perfectly molded all the small holes um, and indentations here which will be where the hinges actually fit onto the screen. What I did then was just tidied up the mold a little bit, took away any excess silicon that was that crept underneath the master inside the mold. There was a little bit. Um, it's very, very common to have that. So just get you get your hobby knife um, and just remove it as, as, as best you can really. Um, it seems to have come off pretty easy. There wasn't much on there. So what we want to do now is I want to show you exactly how I'm going to be casting the polyurethane resin. Before I do, I want to show you what I'm actually going to be using. So it's a two part resin um, and it's PX90 uh, hard flexible polyurethane resin. It seems to be a really, really good stuff. It's two part, part A and part B. And it's a one to one mix ratio as well, which makes it even easier. I also got from, again, from Easy Composites um, was some black pigment. So. What you need to do with the black pigment is you need to add it in very small quantities. So the more you add, the darker your, your mix will become and the darker that your cast will become as well. If you mix too much, it can actually affect the cast. And sometimes if you mix way too much, you can actually uh, have a failed cast and it won't actually, won't actually cure properly. I worked it out that I needed about 115 grams worth of each part. So 115 grams of part A and 115 of part B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and pour part B into the cup. Um, I'm going to be using just a small ordinary set of scales uh, to do this. So get that done. Um, so there's 121 grams in there. So I went a little bit over, which isn't, isn't too much of an issue. Just go ahead and open the, open the pigment. You really only need a very, very small amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these little sticks and you should see it pretty quickly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this onto the scale and then I'm gonna add 121 grams of the part A into this mixture. 
and this is where you really need to mix them really really well again trying to avoid air bubbles now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take another one of the cups that I've got now actually if you can probably not sure if you can see but I've kind of cut like a funnel um, what I'm going to do I'm going to pour I'm going to do the use the bombs away method um, I'm going to pour the resin out of this cup into this one not only will this help mix it a little bit more it also pull um, whatever resin whatever part A or part B uh, is at the bottom of this cup in my right hand um, and kind of put it on top and just just helps it mix a little bit more it's also worth always going over the top of the resin that you need again like I said because it's always better to have more if you are using this method you will always have a little bit left in the cup as you can see so if you've got a little bit over it will just allow for that and once I've poured that just give it a little bit more of a mix and that should be ready to cast and pour so what you want to do is they do say to pour it in one spot and let the resin run around your mold um, that just kind of pushes all the air bubbles out but because this is kind of a weird shaped mold um, I'm going to pour it in um, each individual corner um, there's no major bubbles there's some surface bubbles which are which isn't too bad um, but overall it looks good I'll probably leave this for about an hour and then we'll demold it thanks very much for watching if you've got any questions uh, about anything in the video let me know um, I'll put a link to the easy composite websites just below uh, which is where I got everything from keep your eye out for further videos I'm gonna be doing a few more giving you more aspects of what the sealer is and how it works and how it's been built um, and we'll see you soon.